Oh, that's right. We're right back here. Sharp Facets Gallery on the 72 Bypass 408 in the afternoon. And about a year ago, Sonny Cox became the coroner for Greenwood County. And here he is today sitting down with us. Sonny, we gave you a little while to get some... Uh, to get some get some experience under your belt and everything, and are glad to have you here today. How are you doing, Sonny Cox? Doing good, Ann. Thank you, and I appreciate that. Let me get acclimated to the, the position. Yeah. I appreciate that. Absolutely. You've had a uh, busy first year, I guess. Uh, you couldn't have imagined that we could have had so much activity, could you? No, and I think it's uh, uh, the first in the history of Greenwood to have that much activity. Exactly. And you were telling me that uh, we made national statistics? Yeah. What yeah. was the statistics that uh, Greenwood County got in the last year? Not not a positive thing, but... No, uh, no, definitely, it was a horrendous thing. Uh, uh, and I think 17 homicides in the history of Greenwood County, uh, it actually made national news. Because it was yeah, uh, number one for the per capita? Okay. Which is about what about seventy thousand people? We, yes, we service about seventy thousand people. So, um, gosh, you know, it kind of makes you wonder what happened last year, Sonny. What do you, what do you, as you've analyzed this, and you must have had a lot of thoughts about, you know, all the multiple suicides and such that Certainly. happened. Certainly. Well, you know, I think a lot to do with the economy, uh, drug abuse, home values. I think uh, combine all that, and I just think. Society has diminished, and, and the thought process out here is, is, is nothing. Anymore. Yeah, it seems like um, if you don't like what somebody's saying, well, get a gun. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. where it used to be, you and I were talking about this, a couple of guys would go out and have a little fist fight, and it would be over. Best friends next day. Yeah. Yeah. But now, you, you, you better run, because somebody's going to go get a gun and bring it back, for the most part. Yeah. That's a... Uh, that's a hard thing, and you know, I, I actually think that the internet is a two-edged two sword. It's a great tool. It certainly allows us to have instant access to so many things. But on the flip side, it can be rather negative certainly. because so, uh, we've got so much copycat killings and and this type of thing. Certainly, social media. I, I can I can vision it happening. Um, whoever whoever keeping up with the events as they occur. It may seem like a good idea at the time to them. Right. And I think the other thing is that uh, we also have instant access to as something is happening, Sorry. which uh, can be good, you know, from the standpoint of uh, probably capturing a killer or capturing a, a robber or a burglary or something like that, to have that instant access. And I know the police and the sheriff's department depend on that social media, too. Certainly. And there's ambient changes too then. Sure. But uh, on the other hand, you know, you and I were talking about the Jamie Wilson. That was one of the first in the nation of a school shooting. I remember that. Yeah. And, and then there wasn't anything for a long, long time. But since Newtown, it seems like we've had a, a lot more activity on, on that side. We so, have. Yeah. So in, in Greenwood, w what what do you try to do when it comes to a um, a killing, a murder, a death? Uh, well, we work great with law enforcement. They do the investigation of the actual who done it. Um, we deal with the the victim and the victim's families. And and I guess with your background in law enforcement, since you've been in law enforcement for so long, I guess that that, that can be. I'm sure that's a good thing, but I'm sure sometimes it's a, it can be a little bit of a negative because you want to predispose the other direction when your direction is supposed to be on the other side of the fence, really. Certainly. Uh, you know, I'm thinking law enforcement, who done it? You can't help but think that uh, of why they've done it. Uh, but, but I try to stay focused on the forensic part. What can we do to seal this case once an arrest is made? Um, uh, any evidence that we can preserve or... or evidence that I deal with is, is the deceased. Sure, and I suppose any of, um, if it was uh, any bullets or anything that, anything that is in the direct scene of, of the crime? Certainly, or, or in, within the body, uh, we would take it and we would take possession of that uh, during a forensic.
kinds of laptops. Sure. Now you also, um, if I'm if I'm correct on this, you have to uh, notify the family, and you're involved in every aspect of a death unless a physician is involved in it. Sure. Is that is that correct? Uh, I'm dealing with any homicide, suicide, any accidental death, any natural death, um, uh, and home death. Um, in those very rare occasions, you have undetermined cause of death, and I, I deal with. Uh, for instance, we uh, had 956 deaths in Greenwood County last year, in the year 2013. Is that a normal amount? Uh, yeah, it is according to DHEC. Um, it, of course, those are provisional numbers. Sure. But the um, coroner's office dealt with 674 of those 956 in some shape or form or fashion we had involved in that. Um, so that's quite a few cases per year. But if a doctor is involved in it, you don't have to be involved. Is that right, or if a doctor, if, if a patient does not have an ongoing relationship with a physician, mm -hmm. or say this physician has not seen this patient in, in a couple of years, or, or within several months, we would go ahead and, and, and certify that death. Okay. So, but does a doctor pronounce it somebody that's dead? Certainly. Okay. If they go into the emergency room and. and the physician, the, the attending physician, be the pronouncer, and I may at times, if it's unusual, suspicious death, or within 24 hours of admittance to the hospital, then you will certify that death. Okay. But they, but they would pronounce it. They would pronounce yes, it. Sir. So, um, how has it been for for a year experience here to uh, go from uh, the sheriff's side to the coroner? It's like going from zero to sixty. <laughs> uh, you know, it was is a totally. Uh, uh, change of pace, change of mindset. Um, I didn't have a, any idea we was going to be this busy my first year. But Are you telling us you were looking for an easier job, Sonny? <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you know what? I, I feel like I feel like you know I fell in place with it. I really feel I'm in my comfort zone. Um, you know, my goal is to serve the deceased and the families of the deceased, and uh, and that's basically what I did in law enforcement career. Yeah. So um, now, but you also have to get certified, correct? Or you did want to? Well, by law, I had to go to the corner school, which okay. is one week at the academy in Columbia. I did that first week I was, uh, uh, after being sworn in. Mm -hmm. Then uh, my goal for the first year was to become a certified medical legal death investigator, which is being a diplomat. Um, and I'm a registered death investigator with the University of St. Louis School of Medicine. So and that was my goal. For that. And, you, and you did that? I did, yes, ma'am. I got that certification, and, uh, and I'm rather proud of that accomplishment. Well, okay. Well, we are here with the coroner for Greenwood County, Sonny Cox. Many of you have known him working in community service division. He did a lot of things. How many years were you with the sheriff and the police department both? 29 years at the city, and uh, city police department, and seven at the sheriff's office. 29, that was 36. 30. Yeah, 36 years, right? That's right. Wow, that's a long time. Wonderful years. Wonderful years. Hey, we'll be back in just a minute. Don't you go away. Oh, that's right. We're right back here, Sharp Facets Gallery. Yes, I'm Ann Eller. Yes, I'm here with Sonny Cox, the coroner for Greenwood County. He's been in that job for a year now. I guess he has three more years in that job. And if you have a question, give us a call, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. Now, Sonny, I think a lot of people, you know, you think of a coroner, you think of uh, Quincy, MD, we think of all of these roles. What exactly does the coroner in Greenwood County, what are they supposed to do? They don't do autopsies. No, the no. medical examiner does that. Right. So yeah. what do you do? Okay, coroner, I just certified deaths. Um, uh, again, the homicide, suicide, anything unnatural, uh, suspicious. Uh, accidental, uh, we, we certify those deaths. We respond to the scenes. Uh, we investigate these, these incidents, and uh, we rule on the death. Okay. What else do you have to do in relationship to a death that happens in Greenwood County? Well, we have always have to do the, the most important thing is the, the cause and manner of death. We have to rule on that. Um, then we have to notify the deceased next of kin. And I always make it a uh, point to do that in person. And then we call somebody on the phone. Um, that has to be one of the hardest parts of the job. Yeah. A lot of people ask me, Sonny, what is the hardest part about being a coroner? 
it's not so much what I see sometimes, but it's when I have to knock on somebody's door and tell that person their loved one uh, won't be coming home and why. Now, that's the hardest part of my job like this when I do that. And I've had to do that a lot this year. Right, this year. And what about, um, you know, it says secure property obtained from the deceased for the next of kin. Certainly. All right. For instance, if uh, um, the, the, the deceased had, had a purse or wallet on him, $800 in there, we have to secure the, the, the values, uh, watches, rings, jewelry, the, anything that is on that the deceased person, mm -hmm. we, we take custody of that and we put it in a vault and hold it to the next of kin and claim it. Now, I, I, one of the things that I expect is kind of difficult because we at Sharp Facets, we deal with that sometimes, is family members and wanting to get the things that the deceased had and making sure that you're giving it to the right person. Certainly. They have to report to our office in person. They can't be a phone call. We won't mail anything out. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to do the photo ID and they have to, we have to prove that they are the next legal, next of kin. Well, that can be kind of hard sometimes, can it, Sonny, it particularly if you've had uh, two wives or uh, yeah. something like that? Yeah, it can be hard, but we've uh, so far we've been able to work it out this year, you know, uh, doing, doing some phone calls and maybe doing a little research. Uh, we, we try to get all that done before that person comes to the office. And what about, what about um, determining the cause of death? That, uh, do you, are you always able to do that? It's not always easy to do that, but right. we, for the most part, we're, even now and again, we will have a rare occasion where it's undetermined. That's not very often. Um, if we work in a death, we would subpoena medical records for that person. Mm -hmm. uh, we subpoena any hospital visits for that person. We will know. That gets pretty technical then for you, I it would does. presume. I mean, do you have the, uh, I'll say, the experience to be able to understand what you're looking at? I'm, I'm getting it very rapidly. <laughs> But I, have I, a, I have a very good translator. Very good translator? Very good translator on, on some of the medical terminology that I need. Um, but the, the, uh, uh, we do that within the office. You know, it, it's pretty, it, it's okay for a layman to, to look at some of those records yeah. and decide. So you determine the cause of death, and then that has to go. Now, sometimes when somebody dies, that's not, you don't always have that information when somebody dies. No. So you have to go back and fill in the death certificate, Sorry. I would presume. We, we go ahead and submit the death certificate pending investigation. It can be pen, the pending, uh, uh, pending toxicology, and then we can always amend it at a later time once the results of such tests come back. Now, I would be curious to, to know, and you know, this is uh, the Hoffman that just died, the big the actor that just died. He died, quote, with a needle in his arm, so they're saying that it was not a suicide, it was an overdose. But but theoretically, the difference between something being a suicide and something being an overdose can mean a, a lot of difference as to, well, for insurance money, for certainly, example. Certainly. Yeah, it can. And, and if we work in a case, uh, a lot of times on suicides we'll see a note or the, the maybe family members will give us indication that was the intention of the deceased. Uh, but if we're missing those factors, right. uh, we will most likely we will have accidental. Sure. But that's a, but that's a, that's a very uh, t tricky waters right there, isn't it, it? It really is when it comes to, to uh, insurance policies, stuff like that. Uh, you know, they, a lot of them won't pay off on suicides. Sure. And uh, particularly if it's within a, a two year or one year, or there even can be uh, lengths of time in that. And of course, um, how about working with the families? That has to be very hard when somebody is in a lot of um, distress. Certainly, uh, it, it's, it's an emotional roller coaster for them. Um, we do not just respond to a scene, and 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 you know we, we do what we have to do with the deceased. But I don't close the door on the families ever. You know, I try to do a follow up, maybe a week or two later. Uh, uh, you know, but I always try to stay in some type of communication with. Because I'm always accessible to the to the, to the families, and I get a lot of calls. I get a lot of visits during the day from families. Yeah. Now, where is the coroner's office? We have room 223 at Park Plaza. Park Plaza. Park Plaza. Got a nice office. Uh, my first year, county council was good to me. They gave me a, a, a 
a bigger office and some new furniture and some fresh paint. So oh my God! We you just went here. all out there, yeah, Sonny Cox. They are. Yeah. They, they've taken really good care of me, and uh, and I think it's warming to a family that walks in. Uh, the first thing they see is going to leave a, a, an impression with them, but uh, but we get a lot of visits from families. Now, um, and speaking of that, well, your staff. Mm -hmm. How many people work at the coroner's office? I got wonderful staff, and I couldn't have done this my first year without them. Um, I just, I'm full time, of course. I have a full time administrative assistant, Debbie Massey. She's also uh, uh, performing as a deputy coroner as well. Then I have Steve Owens. He's the chief or slash senior investigator for the coroner's office. He's been there 20 plus years. Uh, so I'm blessed to have, I have really good staff. And uh, they have really showed me the way, and they have, have embraced me. Coming in. Now, the coroner's office could get a call any time, day or night. That's correct. We have six part-time deputy coroners, and we have somebody on schedule uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, three or five days a year. So we are always got somebody uh, available to answer calls, and I do my share of that. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I think it had to have been just a very, very wearing last fall. It was. When it was. It, well, that last quarter of the year where we had the... Uh, family that uh, was killed and then of course there was another and then there were the two girls that were murdered at the um, at the um, in one of the hotels here and I mean it just seemed to go on and on and you just wondered where it was going to end. How did you feel going through all that time period? Well I really didn't have time to, to, to just stop and think. Um, I, I just can't envision this happening in, in the good community of Greenwood. I, you know, I've never seen it in my law enforcement careers, and I'm wondering why am I seeing it now. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm just I'm sorry all that happened, and, and, and but it kept me so busy, and, and, and really I was educated more and more. Uh, as you got a lot more education than you would have normally probably Certainly. thought you could have gotten in a year. Certainly, and, and my thing is anything outside of a natural death, I'm going to be on the scene, always be on the scene. Sure. And, and, uh, because you know, it is my scene as far as the, the, the corners part of it, but, uh, but I, was, I was very active in about a 35, 40 day window there. Yeah. I think everybody here in Greenwood was on edge as to what was going to happen next. Uh, couldn't, you, you couldn't help but wonder what was going to happen uh, tomorrow or the next day. And for anybody that has lived in Greenwood for 20 years, so I'll say 20 years plus, mm -hmm. To see that type of uh, thing happening just was like foreign to all of our thinking. Certainly, and that's not a norm for Greenwood County. You know, it may be nine. It, it, that's a hard year for Greenwood County to have nine homicides, but when you have seventeen, uh, that is not that is not Greenwood County. I know. Now, uh, well, uh, we'll talk about that, I guess, when we come back. We are coming up on the news here in just a second. We are talking with Sonny Cox. He is the coroner for Greenwood, South Carolina. We're going to be talking more about things that go on in the coroner's office. What, uh, any questions that you have, don't hesitate to call us, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. And when we come back, we're going to ask some more questions and find out some more. One quick thing, I was surprised to see that uh, you have to sign the cremation permit before a body can be cremated to the funeral homes. That's correct. Every one of them. That's a, so a family member can't say, oh, go ahead and cremate mom? No, they have to have actually with the funeral, the, the funeral home, they have to have a uh, cremation agreement signed. I have to receive a copy of that agreement. I have to receive a copy of the death certificate uh, to make sure we're cremating who they we're say. Supposed to. <laughs> There's a lot more to it than you think. It, it, it's a lot to that. Absolutely. Well, it's time for South Carolina News. We'll be back. Don't you go away. Um, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? Or a college tuition hung on a wall? Or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box? Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. Oh, that's right. We're right back here, Sharp Facets Gallery. We are talking with Sonny Cox. He is the coroner for Greenwood County. And he took over this office a year ago, and last year was such a busy, busy year, particularly in the last quarter. 
But, Sonny, you have uh, some things you'd like to be working on this year and next year, uh, things that you think the coroner's office should be doing. Can you tell us what some of those things are? Certainly. Uh, my goal for my second year is to become an internationally accredited coroner's office. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but it, it holds us to a higher standard in professionalism. Uh, it means we work within certain standards recognized internationally. But uh, that's my goal, to become accredited coroner's office. There's only two in the state at the moment, Lexington County coroner's office, Richland County's coroner's office. I sure would like to be number three. Well, what do you have to do to do that? Uh, we just have to come, uh, uh, come up with policy procedures and way we uh, that are in compliance with international standards. But, uh, got to have that policy procedures in place, which we currently do not have. Okay. So this is something you'll be working on. That's kind of like what the Sheriff's Office went through, Certainly. upgrading their policies and, and this type of thing. Certainly. And I kind of spearheaded that for the Sheriff's Office when I was there, uh, and you just work within certain standards. Okay. So that'll take, how long will that take, do you think, so? That, that's a uh, one-year process. It takes 12 months. And looking over the, uh, uh, the, the accreditation, Instruction. It's going to take every bit of it. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. Yeah. So um, as we're talking about things that are going on, we did talk a little bit about cremation permits. But um, when you have to do an autopsy, does someone, uh, do you have only one source that you use? Do you have different sources? Do you use different people for different types of cases? Uh, we have, uh, we utilize three different places, one in Newberry. Uh, we have Anderson and we have Greenville. Um, we'll pick between the three. Do you always have to do an autopsy? Not always, no. Right. In what cases do you decide that an autopsy is necessary? Okay. Uh, any homicide case that we work with, we, we require to do an autopsy on that. Um, if we cannot determine a cause of death, say if somebody 30 years old passes, there's no rhyme or reason this person should have passed, passed away, then we will do an autopsy on that. Um, and uh, to find out the cause of death. Um, now, a family member, a family can do a, what they call a private autopsy. If we don't order an autopsy, family wants more answers than they can order. Now, who has to pay for the autopsy? Taxpayers pay. This budget is in my, my budget every year. Uh, so, actually, taxpayers. Taxpayers. How much does an autopsy cost? Uh, just under $1,000. $1,000. Wow. So, if you had... Uh, Three hundred deaths that needed autopsies. That would be a lot of money. Certainly. Now, if if we feel like maybe it's heart related, then we would, you know, certainly check the heart first, and then that comes at a reduced price. So you can do partial partial autopsy. Partial autopsy. autopsy. That's correct. Uh, but a complete autopsy is just under a thousand dollars. Wow. And how about as far as uh, toxicology tests now? That doesn't necessarily require an autopsy, does it? No, it does not. Um, uh, I'm capable of drawing necessary samples to send the slit and have them analyzed. Uh, and all the deputy coroners are, are, are capable of putting samples. Uh, now, where does the body go? Where does the body go when somebody is declared dead and they haven't gone to a, um, a funeral home? Mm -hmm. where, where does the body go? We place them in self-regional health care. Okay. So they go to the hospital? They do. Okay. So you would do any of that type of work at the hospital? We have done a lot of work there at the morgue at the hospital. The morgue at the hospital. Now, when you send off uh, fluids, I know one of the things that a family member always wants to know is what the cause of death. And when you have an autopsy done, how long does that take usually? Autopsy from a forensic pathologist can almost immediately determine the cause of death. And, uh, and, and we know that very day of the autopsy. Now, the toxicology part, it has to be analyzed through the uh, South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. It could take up to six weeks or maybe eight weeks. Yeah. That's unconscionable, That's Sonny. True. I mean, six to eight weeks to wait to find out what your loved one died from. Certainly. And, and, and my heart goes out for that. I, I, I really hate it that way. Uh, and, and, but Why we, does it take so long? Uh, well, it's my understanding they're understaffed, and, and uh, uh, the process alone takes a lot of check, recheck, and, and check again. So um, they got a, a procedure in place, and they're very thorough and very, very, very uh, methodical in what they do to testing. I, I have total trust in them. 
By the time you get it back eight weeks later, you've already made up your mind what the cause of death is personally, the person who has lost somebody, I think, you know. And I know it's hard on the families. I understand that. It's it's an emotional strain on the families. Sure. Um, But the day I get it back, I try to pay visit to to the families involved and and, and give them the answers that you've long waited for. Sure. But that's still six to eight weeks. That's, uh, that, that seems like that should be something that something should be done about. And I would charge that, you know, it would seem that the offices of the coroners could ask for a um, faster turnaround here. There seems like there should be something that should be able to be done on that. Well, and we utilize SLED because they are an accredited agency and they have policies, procedures in place. We know what's done right because uh, we might use the private sector and get save a little bit of that time off. Right. But, but it's not guaranteed. Now, how much does toxicology test cost? Well, through South Carolina Law Enforcement, it gives you nothing. Okay. To, nothing to the taxpayer. Okay. Uh, they do that just like any other uh, law enforcement uh, uh, procedure and, and give us results at, at, at no direct cost. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'd rather pay a little extra and know quicker if I, that it was my situation. I mean, I'll just be perfectly frank. I know it's like getting a test from a doctor or something where you go and you get tested and they tell you it'll be six weeks before you get the test results. You're like, oh, my God, I could be dead by then. You know, or your, your anxiety level is so high trying to figure out, do you have cancer, do you not have cancer, or any of a number of diseases out there. Totally agree. I've been there and done that and, and sleepless nights and wondering what's wrong with me and, and it can wind up being nothing but yeah, exactly. you know, I thought the worst case scenario. You made yourself sick, probably, <laughs> thinking about it, yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, that, you are going to be trying to get uh, the uh, International Accreditation Association to be part of that. That would be third in the state. That would be uh, pretty big, wouldn't it? Certainly. It's an international accreditation. There's a lot of standards we've got to meet. But it would raise that bar professionally to another level. And that's what I'm looking at. Well, all right. Well, we are here with Sonny Cox. Do you have any questions? Am I covering all the issues here? Hey, give us a call, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. Yeah, I know. That's right, 448 in the afternoon, folks. It's kind of gray and cloudy out there. But uh, I understand it's only supposed to get down to around 42 maybe this evening. So, uh, not too cold, but still wear a jacket if you're going to be out there. Hey, I'm Ann Eller, and I'm right here with Sonny Cox having a uh, good time talking about uh, the coroner's office. And, of course, we were just talking about the time frame that it takes to get things back from uh, basically from the toxicology uh, side of it from SLED. It doesn't cost anything, but it sure takes a long time to get it. I think they ought to beef up the staff down there a little bit. What do you think? That would be nice, and I would love to give the information back to the, the families uh, a lot sooner than what I do. Sure, exactly. Now, of course, um, your office is at Park Plaza. Park Plaza, room 223. 223. And um, you actually have regular office hours? Yes, we're open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5 p.m. Somebody's always in the office, unless it's a rare occasion we have to go answer a call and take more than one. But uh, we're always there, and we welcome people to come out. Sure. Now, I, I'm, I, I think that you have some programs that you're involved in for helping keep people alive. You know, this texting thing is a dangerous thing, I think. Uh, you know, they thought telephones were bad, but texting takes it to an all-new level. Sure. I've got this, several things dear to my heart. Um, <clears throat> and one of it's offered through the South Carolina National Safety Council. Um, they do the Alive at 25 program for high school age kids or any, any, any young person between the age of 15 and 24. It teaches behavior modification uh, while out in a vehicle. Um, it's not necessarily the mechanics, but the, the, the uh, behavior part. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the, uh, the Texan can wait. I'm, I'm pro that. And, uh, and I'm, just, I'm working closely on it. Didn't we, put up, didn't we pass a, a law within the city that they're not supposed to be any texting? Yes. But then I go through this <laughs> ten times a day, and that four people just—I know, I know—they can't put it down. 
Now, can they stop somebody for texting, or is that like, um, isn't seatbelts, you're supposed to wear your seatbelt, but you can't really be stopped for not wearing a seatbelt? What is the regulation on that? Pa- I think they pass on it. You can actually be stopped and charged. Just for, just for the officer seeing you not wearing sure. your seatbelt? Sure. Okay, so if you're sitting at the stoplight there, and you happen to look over, and there's an officer, and you're texting. You better say, uh-oh, because it's too late then. <laughs> it's if too he, late. He sees you, he can stop you. I, I just can't believe that texting has to be uh, done while you're driving. How can you take your um, eyes off the road to find the letters to be able to text something? I can't text when I'm just sitting in the office. Uh, well, Sonny, you're a little older, so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is very convenient. It is very convenient to text. But uh, this texting thing while you're driving or doing anything else, how can people walk down the road and be texting. We've seen all kinds of cases where people have fallen off si- sidewalks and walked right into cars. Certainly. I've seen it and, and, and uh, I've seen several accidents. And you suspect they were texting, but you, you didn't know. But, right? sure. So uh, the texting program and Alive at 25 now, um, any other things that you're working with? Yeah, uh, domestic abuse, um, I'm, I'm very strong on that. I've seen the, uh, the results of domestic abuse, how far it can go with homicides. Uh, so that's very dear to my heart as well. Uh, we're trying to raise money from Egg South, but and that's in March. But, uh, but just certain programs that I'm pro about. Now, do you give programs? Uh, do you give any programs? Sure. Yes? Well, my, my goal, again, for my second year of my first term, I want to get into the high school and, and do programs for, for the high school age kids. Uh, show videos of what can happen. Um, and, but they never think it can happen to them. Oh, no, they don't think so. No, no, right, no, exactly. No, yeah. no. And them tell you something. And they'll tell you all day long, it won't happen to me. But they have High school students are invincible. We all know that. They ought to have been in my shoes a few times this year, and, and it would have been gut-wrenching what I saw. Uh, but we have to educate. One life lost is one too many. But... You know, and we can sit in the office, wait for a phone call to respond, be reactive. I don't want to be reactive. I want to be proactive. Sure. So uh, there are programs now. If somebody wants to call and talk to you, uh, what's the telephone number? Uh, they can call my, my office number. Mm-hmm. Uh, anytime from 835 is, is 942-8552. Okay. Or they can certainly reach me on my cell phone, 554-6102. There's a dog walking by. And I'm not going to move. You're not going to move. And Crazy is just greeting that dog out there saying, Hello, come over here and see me. God, I swear. Oh, poor Gracie. All right, Gracie, that's enough. All right. Are you done yet? No. Okay, you want to talk some more. Well, um, Sonny, I, I know this has been a hard first year for you. What do you see, though, as we start out into next year? And, of course, you work, I'm sure, with the Sheriff's Office and the Police Department. What are they thinking for this year? I mean, I know nobody can make predictions, but what is the general feeling? Well, I, don't, I really don't I hope and pray that it's not going to be as bad as it was last year. Sure. Um, we're, we're all every year. Right. Do we think that the conditions that are out there are going to cause uh, more problems when it comes to this? Uh, well, the economy, uh, drug abuse, and, and uh, uh, home values all play a role, I think. I feel personally feel like. Um, but uh, I think it was all of us working together and through awareness, I believe we can make a difference. Well, I certainly hope so, and I think that, uh, do you feel that you're in the right place now that you're in the coroner's office there, Sonny? Without a doubt. I, I'm totally comfortable where I'm at. Um, I you know, wish I had done it sooner, but uh, uh, serving the people of Greenwood County, you know, that's my passion. Well, you've been doing that for a long time. In fact, what was your first job, Sonny? Uh, I was walking to the beat up town at the Greenwood City Police Department at the age of 20 years old. 20? At the age of 20, that's right. So uh, it's been a long time, and you have found your niche. Anything else you can tell us about the coroner's office there, Sonny? No, I, you know, we, we welcome feedback from the Greenwood community. Uh, please don't hesitate to come by the Greenwood County Coroner's Office at any time.
it's a it's a friendly place. It's a very friendly place. <laughs> and a very warm place, I promise you. I promise. Well, um, this has been most interesting to have you here today. I know that uh, it's hard to be in that position, and I'm sure as the next year comes through, you'll learn more and more about being in the coroner's office. Sure. So, uh, um, have we had any, any, we haven't had any murders so far, have we, this year? Homicides? No, not in the year 2014. Not yet. Not in 2014. Okay. All right. Well, we are here at Sharp Facets Gallery. I'm going to be back in the morning, and tomorrow morning in the 9 o'clock hour, we are going to have uh, Congressman Trey Gowdy on the line with us. He'll be, of course, he is working, um, he is a former prosecutor, you know, Sonny, and uh, out of Greenville, and he has been working very hard on trying to get some answers on Benghazi. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to hear more about what he has found out about Benghazi, about the IRS, and all these other scandals that are going on up there in Washington, <laughs> D.C. You know, if we were all down here in Greenwood, we probably wouldn't have all these <laughs> issues, would we? Mm -hmm. Now, are, are there awards for coroner's office? Uh, do you get awards? I mean, you know, I won an award for... Uh, best radio show in the state of South Carolina, and uh, uh, do you have awards for coroners? Actually, there is. Uh, there is a uh, uh, Corner of the Year Award. Corner uh, of the Year Award? Yes, there is, and, and I guess that that depends on, uh, I guess, the the productivity of the office, how many calls or whatnot per capita or, or county size, sure. uh, the, the public awareness that you do, uh, community services that you do. And so. Um, Somebody has to nominate you for corner of the year, and that's, my goal is to be that corner of the year. Corner of the One year. One day. One day. One year. I won't get that. Well, you know, uh, Wellburn had to wait uh, several years to be <laughs> to win uh, the the <laughs> trophy, right? Uh, that's right? So he did it, and uh, so maybe that will be a possibility for you too. I, I'm a very patient person, but I, <laughs> but I want to learn all I can learn. All you can learn, absolutely. Well, we are right here <laughs> at Sharp Facets Gallery. I think that uh, we are going to wind this up. Gracie sees a dog out there, and I don't think we really have anything else to cover. We've covered everything we can cover here this afternoon. So, Sonny Cox, thanks so much this afternoon for coming in to see us. Thank you very much, Ann. I would please encourage you. If anybody needs me, 554-6102. That's 554-6102. Five, five, this is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Lindsay, let's turn it over, and we're done for today. Bye-bye, everybody.